take a look at this infinitely nested radical sum with the imaginary unit i. The key to solving these infinite expressions is typically noticing patterns. Since this keeps going forever, with the whole thing equaling z, you might notice that the inside is also z. Thus, we can rewrite this as a much simpler expression, z equals square root of i plus z. Squaring both sides and doing a little bit of algebraic manipulation, we're essentially turning this into a quadratic equation with complex numbers. Fortunately, for quadratic equations, we have the quadratic formula. All we have to do is identify the coefficients of this expression, a is 1, b negative 1, and c negative i in this case, and throw these into the well-known quadratic formula. Maybe you want to tackle the discriminant first, that bit underneath the square root, but it cleans up rather nicely as well. And so, fairly quickly, we do get an answer. 1 plus or minus root 1 plus 4i over 2. The big issue that I personally take with this, this is not in the standard form of a complex number. Typically, complex numbers are of the form z equals a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. This does not have that form since that i is underneath the square root. And this is really the interesting bit of math in my opinion. If we can rewrite that radical expression in terms of u plus vi, the standard form of a complex number, we'll be all good to go. How do we do this? Well, we could square both sides, do a little bit of distributing, and matching up the real part and the imaginary part. Very similar to matching coefficients from calculus. When we do that, however, we're getting two equations and two unknowns. Fortunately, we can indeed solve this. Let's isolate v first. That's not too bad. Cancel 2 on both sides, dividing by u as well. We can substitute this and get an equation entirely in terms of u. Now, this isn't the nicest u expression you've seen in your life. Maybe we'll clean this up by multiplying by u squared across the board, simplifying with properties of exponents, and once again setting this equal to zero so it's easier to solve. Well, I say easier, but this is a fourth degree polynomial. Fortunately, it has the form of a quadratic. We could just make another substitution, if you weren't getting tired enough of them already, w equals u squared. Just a slick substitution here. We have yet another quadratic. I won't force you to look through the quadratic formula again. Here's our answer for w, and we're really on our way now. w was u squared. And since u squared we're taking to be positive, we're only going to take the 1 plus root 17 for w. But u is still plus or minus taking that square root. And remember what v was? v was 2 over u, so just take this wonky expression and put it under 2. You could play around with the algebra a bit and make it look a little nicer. So, we have u, we have v. They're both plus or minus, but it works out that it's just this no matter which way you look at it. If you want to go ahead and rationalize those denominators, well, you're more than welcome to be my guest. If you enjoyed this complex number, I'm fairly certain you'll enjoy this one as well. I'll see you in that one.